What's up guys, it's Jamie. Had a really good question arrive in my free Facebook group, which I'll leave a link below if you want to go check that out. It's got five and a half thousand entrepreneurs in there where I basically just document everything I'm doing in my business to grow and scale to as much as $51,000 a month. So go check that out if you're interested. Um, but the question actually came off the back of one of my earlier videos, which I will try to remember to leave a link around at the 25 second mark. And that was basically in terms of the customer state or stage of awareness. This is on uh, the book uh, Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. Talks about the five stages. So they are uh, unaware that is someone that effectively goes through um, life. They are unaware that they have a problem at that stage. They then become problem aware and then solution aware, product aware, and then most aware. <clears throat> now, question was, uh, basically, how do you find them at the right stage of awareness? Okay, so I uh, tackled the actual topic itself of, of uh, stages of awareness, five stages. Um, so this video is just me talking through how you might want to go about finding these people and making sure that you're speaking to them at the right state or stage of awareness, right? So um, if you think of it like this, and I'm going to use a golfing analogy here, but if you are teeing off is it harder to get a hole in one if it's like a say for example a par four and for anyone that is not a golf um, enthusiast that simply means that the anticipation is that you should be able to get the ball in the hole within five hits basically right so if it's a par four is it reasonable to expect that you have a high probability of a hole in one at that point and the answer is no, right? Even even you know pro golfers uh, would struggle to have a high pr probability hole in one, unless the hole is you know like the size of a lake or something like that, right? Which is not the case. Now, contrast that with if you started off at the edge of the green, which call it say 20, 30 feet out from the actual hole, all of a sudden probability has just increased massively about being able to achieve a hole in one with that with that putt or that hit. Um, if you take it a, another step further, let's say that the ball that you started teeing off and it was like this far out from the hole and even someone who's inexperienced has a very high probability that they're going to be able to get a hole in one at that point, right? So if we now bring that into marketing terms, if someone is problem aware, they are teeing off. They are miles away, right? They don't even know they've got a problem at this point. All they know is that they're out for a nice walk on a sunny afternoon, that's it. So contrast that with someone who is problem aware, at least they have an awareness of their problem. They are then aware, like actually it's a part four and I'm miles away and I've only got a putting, a putting wedge or putting iron. Says the golf pro, uh, a putting wedge. Pitching wedge, thanks brain, pitching wedge and uh, a putting iron. <sighs> Anyways, um, and so they become aware that they have the wrong instruments for the, for the task at hand. So therefore it's, again, they become aware. So at least if they're aware, they might start seeking a solution and eventually they get a solution. And maybe the solution is that they get a, a drive or something like that, or they, they can start closer to the green or whatever it was, right? And so, my point with this is that it's going to be easier to sell to someone who is closer to the hole. And if the hole is the product and service and the sale, then clearly selling to someone and communicating with someone that is closer uh, is, is kind of the way to go. Now, the thing to bear in mind is that one of the reasons why sometimes things like affiliate marketing and coaching, things like that can feel competitive is not necessarily because uh, it's saturated and there's you know too many people and less buyers. What it is is that people are only ever targeting the people that are really close to the hole. So these are um, referring to Chet Holmes' book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. He has the buyer's pyramid and he um, basically research suggest, suggests that there is about 3% of a given marketplace that is ready, willing, and able to make a purchasing decision kind of like right now. And so that's the problem. Everyone is targeting those people that are the solution aware. <laughs> Right? They just all they need to do is find the right product for them and then they're you know home and hose basically. And so that's why. And now if you zoom out a little bit and you start communicating to the people that are problem aware, or if you can introduce that problem to them, um, 
then you know now now you you've got them in your world. You can actually uh, sort of indoctrinate them them into that process and perhaps educate them on some of the things that they are experiencing and shortfalls and blah 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 in order to then get them over the line, so to speak. So now that we understand that, right? So hopefully that will all make sense. Obviously, drop a comment. Let me know. I can elaborate that on that a bit further. But if we then go, okay, well, in our marketplace, who would be likely to make a purchasing decision again? Who is going to represent someone that might be problem or solution aware, ideally? And so to put it more into affiliate marketing, coaching, things like that, imagine that someone has gone through the process of purchasing a high ticket program. <clears throat> and I've been on the other side of this equation, it kind of sucks, to be honest. So as a product vendor, um, you know, when we kicked off and, and did the Super Affiliate Accelerator, uh, we ended up having, I think, seven or 800 students in our, in our main group, and an extra like 500-ish or whatever it was in the, um, in, the, in the light version, basically. And so people would join the group, not necessarily to even participate in the group itself. They were there to basically take people that were already solution-aware and then sell them another solution, basically. And... It works, right? Because they've already gone through the process of investing in themselves, investing in high ticket, which takes, there's quite a lot happening emotionally when the first time you invest in a high ticket program. So therefore they've already gone through that rigmarole. They already at that stage are aware of what the, the solution is. And people also tend to have sunk cost bias. And sunk cost bias is quite simply where if you have invested time or energy or money, into a given project you don't want to let it go you don't want to give it up because of the amount of time and energy and money that you have invested in that right sunk cost buyer so therefore it, it's improbable that those folks are going to want to quit so therefore they if they experience any problems they're going to want to seek a solution and because i've already gone through that because they're already pre um preordained to invest in themselves, it's easier to sell them something else, basically. Now, where things get a little bit tricky with that, I personally think that tactic tends to be quite nefarious. And like I say, being on the other side of that with my Ultimate Marketing Mastermind program and obviously Super Affiliate Accelerator, um, it was painful when you'd see a brand new person arrive in the group and they're all like excited and yada yada, and then all of a sudden you see dozens of people befriending them straight away. And you're like, I fucking know what you're up to, you little shits. Or people that weren't even in the group, that somehow, I don't know, they must have had a, a ghost or something in there. I don't know how they'd do it, but they would befriend them. And then they would sell them some coaching. And so they go from investing in a program and without even having the opportunity to see you know, what problems they could come up with themselves or where they could actually make it work, they were getting told externally that oh well, you're never going to make it without some help along the way and well my students you know there's a great program but you know it's probably going to be faster if you go do this other thing so here's my seven and a half thousand dollar coaching thing right so um it was it was hard to be on the other side of that as a product vendor because you was you were witnessing people that were investing in one thing they're all excited and then all of a sudden they just got getting get these like negative messages like oh you shouldn't be doing that well you know i've got this thing and you should hop on a call with me and i will to tell you how to avoid all these common mistakes that people make. And so I guess to conclude, what I'm saying is that it's going to be easier to sell to someone who is problem and solution aware because there's, there's less moving parts to get them to the actual sale itself, right? But just understand that sometimes it might mean people are like, if you are a product vendor, if you're a program vendor, people are going to do like real shitty things to encourage folks to buy this stuff. Right, so I'm not going to be the moral police here and say do or do not. That's completely up to you. Um, and I think it would be naive to to kind of like say that you know just because someone joins your pro program or group that you own them. <laughs> like it's not the case. And so that's that's my kind of take on it. Right, it's going to be easier to 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 sell to folks that have already got traction, got motion. Right, and you can, and in my opinion, you can do it without corrupting your own moral compass, right? I, I strongly believe that. Like, say for example, that I have a group of people in a, in a particular group and I know that they've purchased a particular program. And for the record, I, I buy, I have invested in myself tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So therefore I am part of these 
support groups for those. So it would be very easy for me just to tap in there and just go, oh, these guys are shit, you should buy my thing. Uh, but I don't. I connect with people, yes, absolutely. Um, but I don't rely on that. And, and one of the reasons why I don't want to rely on that is because, A, I think it's, it's shitty and lazy marketing. I think it's kind of nefarious. But then on the other side of it as well is it also, I, I feel like what I witnessed, it, it, it taught people to be lazy marketers. So they were just waiting for new blood to arrive in this, in this group for them to raid it. And so that was their tactic, just go and like find these buyers from this group and like raid it, raid the group and get all the leads and like, you know, discourage them from ascending to the actual coaching for that product and get them to do this other thing over here. And so the problem with that approach though is that it's often a very finite thing. And so there'll be a, a, a window of opportunity for folks that so they'll dive in and they'll get all the leads and raid them, things like that. And then, um, and then if the program disappears, then they don't, they don't, haven't really learned to market properly because they are just relying on buyers arriving in this group and then telling them, you know, to go buy something else or whatever it is, right? So anyway, a little bit of a ramble, but that's effectively it. Um, if you can get into buyers groups that are going to be easier to sell than someone who has, you know, if, if we're talking affiliate marketing, for example, someone who's never heard of affiliate marketing before, like think about the indoctrination that has to happen here's affiliate marketing here's why it may or may not be better or worse than other business models here's the the plus side here's the downside they take another step further so they become aware you know here's some of the issues that are relevant in the industry okay cool here's a potential solution and if you know, if you like isolate this beyond everything else then you know this is not a bad business model for you to go down okay sounds good and here's a product okay sounds good now I'm most aware about it okay sounds good like that's quite a quite a long time and, and, and a long uh, process to take them down not insurmountable by any stretch of the imagination however one other thing to factor into that is if someone is they're aware that they've got a problem they have landed on the solution being say affiliate marketing then they're solution aware so in theory your only competition is the other products that they are specific to that solution, right? So therefore, and when you look at that, that's going to be an easier sell. And and usually that happens after they've either gone through a whole bunch of process to learn some stuff, um, or they've invested in themselves and, and they are looking to continue that education and continue getting that help along the way. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, look, hopefully this addresses the question there. Um, this is, like I say, off the back of that other video I put out. Um, so yeah, go and, and do with that what you will. Like I say, I still believe you can go and find people that are buyers without being an absolute dick about it. And, you know, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm still part of many groups that I, I don't even touch. Like I just, I, I don't have a need to because I try and find leads in, in different ways anyway. Um, but anyway. Hopefully that answers your question and I uh, appreciate you guys. Drop a comment, let me know your thoughts on this one and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.